All right, coming to you live from Frankfurt with uh, Ian Andrews. Ian, how are you? I'm great. How are you, Mark? I'm doing well. So we're here at the Cloud Foundry Summit, and you're with Pivotal. What do you do at Pivotal? I'm VP of Product at Pivotal, so I look after uh, all the business concerns of our, of our software business, including Cloud Foundry. Well, Cloud Foundry, why don't we start talking about that? So for the uninitiated, what is Pivotal Cloud Foundry? Uh, Cloud Cloud Foundry, excuse me, it's a long day, it's hard to talk. Uh, Cloud Foundry is uh, next generation middleware designed uh, for you to run your, your applications uh, in the cloud. Cool. So, and who would be interested in it? Well, you know, our, our customers are predominantly large enterprises, uh, you know, folks like uh, Citibank, Comcast, Liberty Mutual, so we do Ford. We do really well in automotive financial services like banking and insurance, uh, healthcare, telco, media, and entertainment, uh, retail. Folks like uh, Home Depot and Kroger are big customers. Uh, really, anyone that's writing a lot of custom software that believes software is a quarter of their business, Cloud Foundry is the platform for them. So, when you go in to try and sell these folks, if you have 30 seconds with them, yeah. what do you say, hey, this is why you should be? Uh, using Cloud Foundry? Uh, I, I think anyone that has a concern about developer productivity, uh, has a concern about feature velocity, meaning how quickly can they deliver a new application or new features to the business, and operator efficiency. How much does it cost to run a highly available technology platform has got to look at Cloud Foundry. Uh, and if you think about the modern enterprise, they all struggle in these areas, right? Any, any developers you talk to that work in a big, uh, big company, typically, uh, you know, they're on quarterly release cycles, right? Super frustrating, can't get their code into production. Uh, you talk to their, their ops teams, they're constantly firefighting, things are always going down or breaking. And you talk to the, the, the business, and you know, they just can't take advantage of market opportunities because they can't get new products out quickly enough, right? Particularly ones that are you know, software-centric, a new app on the phone or a, a new website, things like that. So I think this is a dilemma that's facing uh, almost all the large enterprises, and, and many of them are coming to Pivotal uh, for an answer, and Cloud Foundry is at the core of that. So, and we're talking about this offline, but when people come to you, maybe who haven't, who've just seen the news, don't know too much about it, say, yeah. hey, I heard about this Docker thing, yeah, yeah, yeah. or this Kubernetes stuff. How does that work with yours, or how is it different? What's the, what's the sound bite, or bites? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Do Docker's great, right? In, in that we've gotten lots of uh, independent software vendors, lots of developers, uh, lots of tech companies to kind of agree on a standardized image format. So the cool thing about Docker is I, you know, I can build something that works on my machine and I can give it to you and you can run on your server or on your laptop. And so it's almost like PDF for cloud applications, right? Um, suddenly we can share things and it doesn't change when it goes from here to there. Uh, we get some consistency and, that, and that's terrific, I think. Uh, and Cloud Foundry fully supports Docker. We've actually had that capability in the product for over a year. So uh, if you want to build and deploy Docker images or pull Docker images off Docker Hub, you can do that with the product today. And, and that's pretty exciting, I think, in this age of, where most companies are bringing uh, more developers in-house. They're, they're onshoring uh, or, or you know, getting out of outsourcing contracts. Uh, anything that can increase developer productivity and satisfaction is pretty cool. Um, we also have, you know, an alternative uh, to Docker images in the, in the Cloud Foundry architecture that we call Build Packs, which allows for some of the separations of concerns. You know, a lot of our customers operate in regulated industries or their their government agencies, so they can care a lot about things like security, auditability. You know, they have different teams responsible for OS versus middleware versus application code. And so there's certainly some challenges in the way that, that Docker works today uh, that you have to watch out for. Cloud Foundry really takes that concern off the table where we separate out operating system from middleware and app code dependencies. Uh, and, and the platform actually allows you to update those independently. Um, and we also, you know, Pivotal is actually on the hook to deliver operating system updates to our customers. One of the features and benefits of the product is we embed Ubuntu. We have an upstream relationship with Canonical, and um, and we also build you know a lot of the middleware components. Like Tomcat is 
uh, at least over the last five years or so, predominantly pivotal committers working on that. So we have the ability to deliver you know, a full virtual machine all the way to app code stack underpinning, which for many of our customers takes a huge burden off them. And so that they, they choose this build pack path over Docker. But really it's, it's not an either or, it's an and scenario in the Cloud Foundry context. Cool, and then just to end with Kubernetes? Yeah, Kubernetes is really interesting. I think there's certainly a lot of community enthusiasm around that product. Uh, you know, there's some interesting collaboration going on right now where uh, the, the Cloud Native Computing Foundation behind Kubernetes is adopting uh, certain standards Cloud Foundry's helped develop around things like the Service Broker API. Uh, so there's some, some interesting community collaboration happening there. I, I think uh, today the important thing to understand is Kubernetes is a fairly narrow slice of the architecture that's necessary for these large enterprises to really operate applications at scale. And so if you're concerned predominantly about developer productivity, operational efficiency, you can't look solely at Kubernetes as delivering that. There's a bunch of things that you'll have to incrementally bolt on the side. And when you look at the scope and capability set delivered by something like Cloud Foundry, it, it's quite a bit larger. So we have a container scheduler at the core of Cloud Foundry, but that's really only one element of the overall architecture. So. Uh, I think a lot of customers um, you know, look to Cloud Foundry as a more complete, holistic solution. Awesome. Ian Andrews, thank you so much. Thanks, Barton.